dear students in this video lecture we will look at into the various receptor types that have been present there in the eukaryotic organism and their mechanisms of action these receptors can be divided into broadly into two groups one is a cell surface receptors and another one is the intracellular receptors look at this image this image displays both the membrane receptors that is present in the cell surface this blue color one and the another one is the intracellular receptor that have been present in the cytoplasm so certain hydrophobic ligand or signal molecules can able to diffuse inside the membrane or they can able to interact with an intracellular receptor now we look at the explanation for the cell surface receptor commonly some five kinds of cell surface receptors have been present there in the living organism it includes g protein coupled receptor which is also called as a serpentine receptor then receptor tyrosine kinase third one is receptor guanyl cyclase the fourth one is gated ion channel and the fifth one is adhesion receptor now we will look into the explanation with reference to the different cell surface receptors the first one is referred as a g protein coupled receptor or it is also called as a serpentine receptor look at the image of a g protein coupled receptor this is the reason they are called as a serpentine receptor it is looking like a serpent serpent is a snake like okay so you can able to see one gpcr in the left hand side looking like a serpent and another one there on the right hand side also it has a various analogous terms also say the g protein coupled receptor is also referred as a seven transmembrane receptor serpentine receptor a g protein linked receptor so it's a large protein family of receptor that sends molecule outside the cell and they can able to activate inside signal various kind of signal transduction pathways why it is referred as a seven transmembrane receptor is due to this reason look at this receptor it is having one 2 3 4 5 6 7 so it is having seven transmembrane helix that is the reason it is called as a seven transmembrane helix receptor the external ligand molecule or signal molecule will be binding to the receptor it activates an intracellular gtp binding protein so you can able to see a intracellular gtp binding protein which regulates various enzyme that in turn generates the intracellular second messenger that will trigger the genetic response so this is a mechanism by which the g protein coupled receptor will be functioning this g protein coupled receptor functioning has been studied by these two persons extensively for which they have been awarded a nobel prize in chemistry in the year 2012 it was awarded to robert lefkowitz as well as brain kobilka for their ground breaking discoveries related with the functioning of the g protein coupled receptors so some more additional points related to g protein coupled receptor it will be having a seven pass transmembrane protein with a cytoplasmic binding site for g protein that is the one we have already seen binding of a signal to the receptor causes the gtp to bind a g protein g protein with attached gtp detaches to deliver the signal inside the cell what are all signals that are delivered it includes peptide hormone rod cells activation in the eyes are related with the functioning of the g protein coupled receptors the g protein coupled receptor signaling systems are widespread and diverse in their functions their functions includes embryonic development sensory reception in human for example vision smell taste are all depend upon the g protein coupled receptors say for example malfunctions in the g protein themselves may lead to several human diseases including bacterial infections the bacteria that causes cholera pertussis that is hoofing cough and botulism make their victims ill by producing toxin that are in turn interfering there with the g protein function so 
more than 60 percent of the medicine that have been commonly available in the market are exerting effects there by influencing there on the G protein pathways. The next one is the receptor tyrosine kinase. So here the ligand binding activates tyrosine kinase activity by autophosphorylation. It's a very simple mechanism. We will see the detail later. The next one is the receptor guanylyl cyclase. Here the liga ligand binding to the extracellular domain stimulates the formation of various second messenger includes cyclic GMP. We will look at some more additional point. For both this enzymatic receptor, it is a single pass transmembrane protein that is involved that binds signal externally and catalyzes the responses internally that is intracellular. The mechanism of action is by passporylation and depassporylation of the protein kinases. Example is these two kind of receptors. The next cell surface receptor is gated ion channel which opens or closes the channel in response to concentration of a ligand or a signal molecule or based on the membrane potential. This can be best understand when you look at into the additional points here. The ligand gated ion channel is a type of membrane channel receptor containing a region that can act as a gate that is opening or closing the channel when receptor is changing the shape. The signaling molecule binds as a ligand to the channel receptor and channel opens or closes. It allows or blocks the flow of some specific ions such as a sodium and calcium. That is the reason it has been referred as based on the membrane potential it has been acting. The ligand gated ion channel receptor in which the channel remain closed. Here the channel has been closed until a ligand bind to the receptor. So this is a ligand or signaling molecule. It is not binding. So the channel remains closed there. So this is a ligand gated ion channel receptor. When the ligand molecule binds, you can able to see the red color binding there. That is a ligand to the receptor. The channel opens and specific ions can flow through the channel very rapidly. And this changes the local concentration of the ion inside this cell. That will in turn trigger a cellular response. These changes may directly trigger the cellular response. When the ligand disassociate from it, that is from the receptor, the channel get closed and the ions will no longer flow inside the cell. Where are these ligand gated ion channels are used? They are used in the nervous system. For example, neurotransmitter molecules release at a synapse, which we have already seen in the example for a synaptic signal transduction. So in the synapse when it is released between the two nerve cells, it binds as the ligand to some ion channels on the receiving cell which causes the channels to open. Ion flow that is in or out triggering the electric signal that propagates down the length of the receiving cell. Sometimes the gated ion channels are controlled by electrical signals instead of the ligand molecules and those kind of channels are referred as the voltage gated ion channel. They are very important in the functioning of the nervous system. The last category of cell surface receptor is adhesion receptor. It is also referred as an integrin receptor. It binds to the molecules there in the extracellular matrix and changes the conformation thus altering the interaction there with the cytoskeleton of the cell. Integrins are principal receptors used in animal cells to bind to the extracellular matrix. They are basically heterodimers and function as a transmembrane linker between the extracellular matrix and the acting portion of the cytoskeleton. Finally, we look at the intracellular receptor. There is only a one important intracellular receptor. It has been commonly referred as a nuclear receptor. Here the intracellular receptors are mainly hydrophobic in nature so that they can able to cross the cell membrane and then they can able to interact there with the intracellular receptor. The examples of the hydrophobic signaling molecule includes the steroid hormones and thyroid hormones in the animals. Even there are certain signaling molecules which found to possess certain intracellular receptor is nitric oxide. It is a very small molecule readily passes between the membrane phospholipids and it can able to trigger a intracellular response. Now we look at the behavior of the aldosterone. 
which is a representative of a steroid hormone and how it works. This hormone is secreted by cells of the adrenal glands, then travels through the blood and enters cell in all over the body. However, response occurs only in the kidney cells because they are the cells which found to contain receptor for this aldosterone. So, in these cells, the aldosterone hormone binds to the intracellular receptor, activates the activates it with aldosterone attached, the active form of the receptor protein then enters the nucleus and turns on certain specific genes that controls water and sodium flow in the kidney cells and that may ultimately affect the blood volume. Now, look at this image based explanation of how the steroid hormone is acting as a nuclear receptor triggering. The steroid hormone aldosterone passes through the plasma membrane as it is an hydrophobic in nature. It binds to a intracellular receptor that is present in the cytoplasm and it is getting activated. So, on activation, the hormone receptor complex enters there into the nucleus through the nuclear pore and then they can able to bind certain specific genes that have been present inside the nucleus. The bound protein acts as a transcription factor that is stimulating expression of certain genes. Say transcription of certain genes into mRNA. So, you can able to see a mRNA formed with reference to the triggered or activated genes. So, those mRNAs when get translated, the specific proteins related to that particular genes will be synthesized.